ACC tournament first round action from Tuesday. Notre Dame rallied from down seven at halftime for this. Trey Wirtz oh. beating Wake at the buzzer, capping off a 17-2 run for the Fighting Irish, who won the game but did not cover the eight and a half point spread. Fighting Irish move on to face six seeded North Carolina. They beat Notre Dame by one point in their only regular season meeting back in January 2nd. More noise in the ACC. Duke is still alive, still in it like Bennett. Blue Devils moving on to the ACC tournament after beating Boston College 86 to 51. Coach K starting their trip, a winning five straight games in the ACC tournament, but no team has won five ACC tournament games in five straight days. At 12 and 11 and a subpar season, they have no choice but to try to keep their postseason hopes alive. So Duke, of course, making some moves. They'll play Louisville later today. UNC and Notre Dame will meet Clemson and Miami. But getting us going at noon today, Syracuse taking on the Wolfpack. Jim Beheim and his crew trying to make some noise and build their resume of getting in that field of 68. All right, let's welcome in one half of the Iowa College Basketball Podcast. Gary Parrish tapping in this morning with HQ. And let's start with Syracuse on the bubble. Had a 15 and 8 record, but only one single win in the quad once. What does this group need to do if they want to have something outside of this tournament and into the 68 here? They need to have more uh, quad one victories than, than just one. That's the biggest issue. Like I heard, like everybody else, Jim Beheim, not bragging, but pointing out that they were very good this season inside quadrant two, inside quadrant three. And that's great and it's true. But it is not enough. You know, the NCAA tournament it is 68 teams, but the idea is to crown a champion. It's to put teams in this event that are capable of beating other good teams. So far this season, Syracuse has not shown that it is capable of consistently beating other good teams. And so they're going to have to show that in this ACC tournament. I, I think they've got to beat NC State today. That goes without saying. And then probably have to beat Virginia to add a quad one win in the quarterfinals. Getting to the semifinals might be enough. I'm not certain of that. They're going to have to win multiple games in the ACC tournament or else they're going to be a big brand waiting to see if they get a, uh, an invitation to the NIT. We have to see how that pans out for them. Of course, as you mentioned, they're taking on the Wolfpack today, possibly getting past them to UVA. Meanwhile, Xavier, they've been trending in the wrong direction since mid-February. They've lost five of the last seven games. Of course, due to that COVID pause since February 13th, four of those losses coming against teams that are not even in the bracket here, Gary. How much faith do you have of them getting past the Big East and into the tournament? I think they can do it. I mean, they, they've shown themselves to be a, a capable team much of the season, but as you accurately point out, they, they've been trending the wrong direction uh, lately. You know, they're, they're six and seven in the first two quadrants with zero losses outside of the first two quadrants. That might not sound good, but when you're comparing it to other bubble teams, it compares pretty favorably. So, uh, listen, they, they, they cannot afford, simply cannot afford to take a bad loss in, in the Big East tournament. But, but if they can avoid that, and I really think that's all they have to do is avoid a horrific loss, uh, they're going to be okay. I, I will trust Xavier that you know, if you and I are talking on Sunday night, I, I think they'll be in, in the bracket. Maybe not where they want to be. Maybe not where it looked like they would be, say, two or three weeks ago, but I still think the Musketeers are, are going to be in the field of 68. Taking on Butler there, they swept the regular season series and a chance to play Creighton as well to boost their resume. Uh, meanwhile, in the Mountain West, you got Colorado State, Boise State. Uh, when you look at these two teams, is there a chance that these two can make it? One or the other? Can you make a case for one coming out that conference there? I think both can make it. I don't know that both will. And if we'd uh, been having this conversation a month ago, I would have told you I, I trust Boise State. There was a time where I thought Boise State deserved to be you know, in the top 25. They had no bad losses. They had good enough wins. They had a, a, a pro in Derek Austin Jr. They really did look the part. But, man, it has been a struggle lately. They're on a, a three-game losing streak. They just took a quad four loss. You know, they, They've got work to do in this Mountain West Conference tournament. And based on the way they've been playing lately, I don't know that you can trust them to, to get that work done. Whereas on the other side, Colorado State, you know, that's a team that has avoided bad losses all season. And that's really all they have to do in this tournament. They don't have to go out and add a bunch of significant stuff. They're on the right side of the bubble right now. Just, just avoid a bad loss. And given that Colorado State ha has been good at doing that all season, I'm going to trust them to do it in the Mountain West Conference tournament. Simply put, both teams can make it. I think both teams probably will. 
but certainly Colorado State is the safer bet at this point. You know, usually each season for coaches is hard to navigate when we're talking about injuries, uh, players not there. Uh, Kansas, for example, they'll have two players out of the Big 12 tourney there for COVID-19, not because of injuries, but David McCormick, the latest one here. If you're Bill Self and other coaches around uh, college basketball, how are you dealing with this? You know, prepping and thinking about lineups and playing time. We know you may not have a guy for maybe four or five days due to protocol. Yeah, I've talked to multiple coaches about this in recent weeks, and, and they're, they're nervous. I mean, can, can you imagine? I mean, you're getting ready to go into the NCAA tournament, in some cases as a number one seed. There's nothing anybody can do to you, but that virus can get you. It, it can not only remove players from your rotation, it can remove you from the bracket. So if you're Mark, uh, Mark Few or Scott Drew or Jawan Howard or Brad Underwood, those are the four coaches of the teams that are projected to be number one seeds right now. You're, you're not worried about are you in the field or not. You don't have the same stress level that you know, Jim Beheim might have at Syracuse or any coach at any bubble team might have. But you do have a, 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 a worry that, you know, can I keep my players safe? Not from death. We're far enough into this thing to know that, that young, healthy people are, are probably going to be okay. But, but that, that won't prevent you from getting removed from the bracket. And can you imagine what, it'd be, what it would be like for, say, Mark Few to have a once-in-a-generation type team, a, a team that is historically great according to the metrics, that is undefeated heading into the NCAA tournament, that, that has a chance to become one of the rare undefeated champions uh, in the history of this sport. And, and the only thing that stands between you and that is, yeah, the competition, but also this virus. And so to a person, coaches are stressing to their players every minute of every day, please be careful. Please don't screw this up. This is no time to slip. Don't go to a restaurant. Don't go to a bar. Don't go to your friend's apartment. Let's keep it under one roof so that we can be safe, get to Indy, stay safe, and take a shot at actually holding the trophy at the end of this thing. But anybody telling you they know that it's going to go smoothly for every team? Anybody telling you they know that other teams won't endure what Kansas is enduring right now. They're, they're just lying to you. They're guessing at best. Uh, that is a, another element of this entire thing that, that has um, previously never been here. Yeah, coaches and programs struggling a lot more as we head towards the big dance here. Gary Parrish laying it all for us out there. Appreciate your time as always. Hey, don't forget, it's bracket season. It's just around the corner. Get started early with your CBS Sports Conference Bracket Challenge presented by Hertz. Going the extra mile for you. Register for a chance to win $10,000. I'm going to say it again, $10,000. All you got to do is log on to cbssports.com slash conference again and get a chance to win some of that green. Don't forget, you can catch Gary Parrish and Matt Norlander as well on the Iowa College Basketball Podcast, breaking it down. There. Of course, the latest news, Kansas will be without two players as they head into the Big 12 tournament. And as well, those bubble teams, keep it tapped with those guys to get you in to know on this field of 68. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.